going to open the uh, Abington Rockland Joint Waterworks meeting. Uh, call to order at uh, 334. Um, if you uh, are going to speak, please announce yourself to who you are so we can make sense of this and the uh, roll call of the board. Robert Corby Jr. Jim Pat Donnelly. Richard Muncy. Yep. Mike Egan. And also on Zoom from the water department is um, John, Joanne Hall and Crystal Cameron. And Joe LaPointe. Oh, and Joe LaPointe was our superintendent. Okay, review minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, next on the agenda is Brian McMillan. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian McMillan. I'm from Newgate Housing. I'm here on behalf of the owner of uh, Lydia Square Apartments Phase One, uh, de currently developing, currently con uh, under construction, uh, is um, Lydia Square Apartments at 80 Norman Street. Um, uh, gentlemen, I uh, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm not sure uh, how much of the background um, on this you're aware of. But essentially what we have is um, uh, a misunderstanding about the connection fee uh, for Lydia Square. Um, this goes back really, I think I had a number of conversations with people in the water department back as early as late 2015 about how the fee is calculated. Um, I've had discussions with Joe since then. I understand now um, how it's calculated, uh, it, it's a little different than what um, you know, I understood from my previous conversations. And the issue really is that my understanding was that there was really a, it was a choice between the water main tapping fee and the domestic water service charge. Um, you know, based on a conversation I had had in the past, I thought that the uh, the charge we would be charged would be, you know, 80,000 for an eight inch pipe. I believe we have an eight inch pipe over there um, for the water main tapping fee. Uh, and we would not be charged the domestic water service charge fee, which for our 44 units comes out to 154,000. So we, uh, we have a discrepancy really of, we thought we, we would pay 80,000. The water department was expecting 154,000. And I had, uh, you know, proposed to Joe at some point, I think back in September, that, you know, maybe we could call it 100,000 and, and, you know, come to, a, come to an agreement that that would satisfy the, the, the permit fee or the, the connection fee requirements. Um, the issue for us is, you know, this is an affordable housing project, um, largely funded with um, some, some what's called soft debt from DHCD and tax credit funding from DHCD. Um, so our budget um, that was approved and submitted and, and uh, you know, the project was financed on that budget didn't really include an amount for the 154,000, um, you know, based on our, our misunderstanding of, um, you know, uh, from the conversations that we've had in the past. So I, I, I asked Joe if we could appear before the board and and request uh, some, uh, you know, a negotiated amount to that uh, to that fee. Um, I, I, you know, I'll say I, I I should should have started by saying I'd like to thank the water department for um, helping us uh, move through construction at Lydia Square. It's really going well, um, and I we do appreciate um, the efforts that the water department has made to to help us be able to continue that and uh, you know get to where we are now. We're about seventy five percent complete. Um, and hoping to be able to come online sometime late this summer. So first of all, you had the eighty thousand dollars raised in the beginning. Um, you're a private company, and I feel as though you need to pay one hundred and fifty-four thousand dollars. 
So originally, as you were saying, um, Brian, the yes. lane tapping charge was waived by the Zoning Board of Appeals um, in the comprehensive permit, which town council said we have to abide by that. When anybody puts a development in, um, the water tapping charge, so if you're putting a 20 house subdivision in, you're paying the eight inch $80,000 tapping charge, you're paying the domestic water service charge for each house. And the way the, the fee schedule reads, that water main tapping charge is waived by the comprehensive permit. So the domestic water charge, which was never waived, um, in my opinion, it is on the newly constructed or restructured multi-unit fees of $3,500 a unit. Uh, I don't know what previous conversations you had, but that's the way I interpret it. So, yeah. you know, that's the way I have to present it to my board. Um, I don't, you know, like I said, they waived the 80,000 water tapping fee. So even if we agree to pay the 80,000, it's already been waived. Yeah, I would say what in, instead what this would be is I would be paying a, I would be paying paying the domestic water service charge, but at a negotiated amount. I think that's how I would phrase it. And the negotiated amount is thirty five hundred dollars per unit. That's the full amount, right? Yeah, I mean we, I know the board has never, I don't think negotiated. Yeah, we don't do it. No, hey, I mean, the fee schedule. I mean, we don't do it. The homeowners, why would we do it now? Um, I'm with that. Well, I guess my, my, you know, the reason I had asked for this meeting is, you know, my calculation of the fee came from conversations that I had had with Dan, who I, I understand is no longer there. So I, you know, I don't really like to point at an empty chair. Um, so in some ways, that's not fair, but it is based on. A conversation that I had had calling to ask for a clarification on on how that fee was calculated. So, you know, I in some ways I am just um, hoping we can have a discussion about, you know, I I I I, I wouldn't come in and say I'm only going to pay the eighty the, I guess it was 80, the eighty thousand. Um, what I'm hoping for is we can find some uh, ground in the middle where you know at least I can get closer to what my budgeted amount was. Joe, can I ask? Sure. With that $80,000, the water connection permit that is waived, yep. then in addition to the water conservation fee, the sprinkler fee, yep. and then the restructuring fee. Right. So it's $80,000 ahead of the game right now. Already. Already. They paid. So yeah. then you want to negotiate a fee, the other fee? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. Eighty thousand dollars ahead of the game, and then you want to negotiate? Correct. You don't do. Right. No, 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 no one get paid one hundred and fifty-four plus the eighty, plus another eighty. Correct. No. The sprinkle, sprinkle, and sprinkle and fire and eighty thousand. Twenty dollars and eighty. Right. There's eighty thousand dollars ahead of the game. Absolutely, and that's why we need right. to leave it at the thirty-five hundred per unit. $154,000. I make it more than that. I'll second that. Um, any discussion? Uh, I'm on board with the high uh, on All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So that's it, sir. Here you go. Okay. Thank you for your time. Okay, next on the agenda is the supply and demand review. Okay, I at this time <clears throat> would like to, oh, okay. So I'm gonna ask the board um, that we hire an engineer to do a supply and demand review. Uh, I gave the board all the projects that we have approved that have not been built yet. Um, which is around 50,000 gallons per day that we have out there that we're not using. It. Uh, it's not included in our withdrawal permit or anything like that. I think we should take a step back, have the supply and demand study before we allow any more 
and actually um, as of last between the drought last year and the COVID last year, we, we pumped an extra 53 million gallons of water. Whoa. Um, that's, that's, so we were over our withdrawal permit for the one year. Whoa. Um, you can see that actually residential was way up, commercial and, and uh, industrial was way down, everybody's home. We're hoping it will go back to normal, but we can't count on that. The reservoir is still 10 foot below where it's supposed to be. Uh, I think with the supply and demand study, it'll take about three to six months to do that. And then we'll figure out, then we'll know by an engineer where we are, where our withdrawal permit is, are we over it, are we way under it, and we'll allow people to tie in. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion to suspend all new hookups until the supply and demand study is complete. After that is complete, I'd like us to come back and, if it, and review it. And if it's still low, then I'd like to do a moratorium at this point. We have to do the supply and demand study. That'll tell us whether we have to do a moratorium. And we have to, I believe, get permission from DVP to put that in. So we'll have either the proof or we know we can allow it. Okay. Right. Okay. I'll second Pat's motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Zero. Aye. Zero. Is there any questions about the uh, supply and demand review? Yes. Okay. Yes, Mary Parsons, Rockland. Um, you're doing this for what three to six months? You're doing a supply and demand review. Yeah, that's how long it's going to take, approximately. Okay, what it, you said something about the fifty thousand gallons. Right now, we have projects that have been approved already. Um, in both towns, Abington and Rockland. Uh huh. That by Title Five, it's almost fifty thousand gallons per day that we have a, that hasn't been built yet. We don't know if it's going to be built. They've had water approved. If the projects could get denied, we don't know that. What uh, project is that that you're you're talking about? There's a number of projects in Abington and Rockland. Okay. Um, Abington's got 104 to 4 units senior housing that's been approved. Uh, there's 3870 bedrooms on 81 Park Street that's been approved in Rockland. Uh, 40 single family homes. Uh, Lydia Square, 44. They haven't started using the water yet. We just want to take a step back. What we've approved, they, some of these projects were approved back in 2016. Um, okay. We want to step back, take what we approved, what we have left for withdrawal. This will, the demand and supply study will tell us all that and be engineered by, by the, our engineering company. And we'll know exactly where we stand. Whether we're under our withdrawal permit um, and we can give more hookups out or if we're out of capacity for our withdrawal. Who would be doing that study? Um, I'm assuming H2 Olson Engineering. H2O? H2 Olson. H2 O L S O N. Okay. And I have a question. Did you waive the fee for Lydia Square a few minutes ago? No, nope. we did not. We did not. Nope. So they have to do the systems development fee. <laughs> Development fee got waived back when they got a comprehensive permit back in 2011. Town Council said we couldn't recover that 80,000. They wanted to negotiate the 156,000 that they owe per unit down to the 80,000, but we did not negotiate. Okay, because um, I've been to water department meetings in the past and they've never waived the system development fee because developers always say that they can't pay it, but then when it's not waived, they come with the money two weeks later. We did not waive that fee. It was waived on a comprehensive permit in 2011. Um, I don't think 
many people on this board were not on there in 2011. And I believe the zoning board waived it because it was originally the Rockland Housing Authority board. It was a town project. Since then, I believe the project's been sold to a private developer. Right. Town council said once they have that comprehensive permit and it is sold, we cannot get that money back. I know the sewer department couldn't collect any of this because all their fees are waived for this project. So the zoning board of appeals waived the um, water that's issue. Not, that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, was before my time. Yeah, because it was a town project, Gary. It was a town. town right. Project. It's the town project, but we have elected water commissioners. Yeah. Yeah. Separate yeah. from yeah. whatever town council says. It was done before any of us were here. Once yeah. it's once it's waived and that comprehensive permit's approved and sold, anything in that comprehensive permit stands. So they could they could force the water department to give water that we don't have. They learned they got water. They got water granted back in 2011. Right, but in the future, could they force us to give something we don't have? No, no. Right now, I think that's what we need to know. If they wanted to put the second part of that development on, they'd have to come before the water board for water approval, which is they won't get. So if we don't have the one. Right. Okay, that's all I have for now. I know, uh, you know, Rick Collins. Uh, I'm asking this as a member of the Abington Planning Board. So does this, just to understand what's happening, are you saying you are not giving any more approval letters for any new projects that come before you? Correct. But commercial or residential? And so <clears throat> that's correct, Rick, until we're done with our study. Okay. But well, you said this isn't a moratorium? Not yet. No. What's we the difference? To, we have to do a supply and demand study, have our ducks in a row before we can apply to DEP for moratorium. We don't exactly know. We know what our withdrawal permit is. We don't exactly know with all the projects we have out. And what we withdrew last year, because of the COVID, uh, people being home, you know, we were, we were 53 million gallons more than we usually are from last year. So we're going to step back through the supply and demand study. And while that supply and demand study is going on, we suspended all new hookups. But that's not considered a moratorium. No. Correct. No. So there's, there's a legal difference between what you're doing in the next three to six months in a moratorium. Yeah, the moratorium, you're gonna to go to GEP for them to okay it. Right now we can't go to them because we don't know what we're gonna have for water. We have to wait for that. We gotta wait for that study. So if we approve if we approve the water in that time frame, the study's being done. We're not exactly I wouldn't think getting an exact study out. No. And, and my my fear is if, if we say we're doing a supply and demand study. It's going to take three to six months. Every person that has something down the line is going to come in and say, I want my water. Well, yeah, I guess that's my question is, you know, we have things in the pipeline. We know things that are coming. We have people who want to do home additions. Uh, we have new businesses who want to open. Home additions, they've already had their water. If, but have, they can, if they add bedrooms, doesn't that include increase their... No, 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 because I mean... We're doing it as any new construction. Uh, if you have a service to the property, you're entitled to that water. Okay. So, for instance, if I'm a commercial, I'm sorry for the questions, but it's important for us to understand. If I'm a existing commercial building right. property, and uh, there's a new use coming in, and the new use might be slightly more water intensive, is that a problem, or is that covered? Is that allowed? No. Well, he also said commercial too. So yeah, yeah commercial is different than residential. I mean, if they, I guess it would be a change in use. We'd have to take a look at that case by case basis. Okay. Yeah. That would be new. Commercial. We're talking about commercial business. They're not used to much water. Oh, they said it would be Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Well, I mean, our intent, Rick, is to find out exactly where we stand. 
whether we're under our withdrawal permit per year or whether we're over it, um, what we have gallons per day to give out. Um, you know, we don't want it all given out. We usually keep anywhere between, you know, six and 10% of our withdrawal just so we have that cushion. Um, that's our intent to find out basically where we're at. Nope. Okay. I, I, projects like the Duane Lock project was approved how many years ago? You know, that's still hanging out there. We've approved that water. Um, you know, different, different projects that have already been approved that are not in our pipeline, you know, for withdrawal. We lost him. We lost I have one more. It's it's more of a statement. Um, I think it was back in 2002. We already went through this, where 16 developers sued the water department to try and force them to give water. And the judge's statement was that you can't give something you don't have. So there's already a court case about this. So anything new, they can't just come in and say, "Oh, we want your water," and that's it. We'll take care. Of so that everyone's clear on that. Please avoid that type of situation. Rick, you got more questions? Nope, that's it for now. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else? Anyone else for supply and demand? Okay. Financial report. Financial report for the joint. Uh, March, we spent 62.5 percent percent on the budget. Well, right where we were last year, too. Um, so we're doing pretty good there. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, superintendent's report. Um, annual statistics report for 2020 has been completed and submitted to DDP. Um, we're now getting the consumer confidence report together for a submittal at the end of the month. Um, I can't thank Crystal enough for all the work she did on that, um, getting all the numbers together and getting it all put in and submitted. Um, another great job by her. Uh, we put an emergency article in the special town meeting in both towns to purchase two filtering vessels for the Hanging Street plant to help us with the PFOS removal. Um, you know, naturally, we try, we try to add the carbon to see if that would help. Um, that's an ongoing process. We did have good luck with the filtering vessels, uh, removing it at Myers Avenue. So, that's our long-term goal. The problem is supply and demand. We're trying to find it um, right now. So we at town meeting, if we have the money, it's sitting there. And you know, we can purchase right away. Um, the PFOS public education letters were sent out to all the customers. Again, I'd like to commend Crystal on the great job she's been doing, putting it all together, dealing with all the phone calls. In a tremendous amount of work in a very short time. Um, you know, explaining to everybody who calls, we, we try to get back to them. Naturally, we kind of been inundated with the phone calls. Tommy and Crystal would handle them. Um, it, as far as I can see, they're doing a great job explaining what's really out there and what's not out there. Um, we'll go further into this uh, later when the engineers come. I'm sure people have questions about the PFOS. And, We'll have an extended conversation on that later in this meeting. Uh, Crystal and myself met with the Rock and Board of Selectmen and explained everything about the public education letters at their request. Uh, we've been meeting with Western and Sampton engineers to figure out the path forward to PFOS uh, exceedings at the Hingham Street Reservoir. Uh, like I said, we, we began adding the pulverized granulated carbon to the water to see if that's going to bring it down. It, that This is only, if it does, it'll be a temporary solution, but we're trying to 
take a proactive approach and see if we can get it where we want it. We, like I said, we're well below the federal 70 parts per trillion, but the state of Massachusetts is 20 parts per trillion and we're a little bit over. So, uh, you guys are doing a great job on that, doing crypto. Uh, we met with Steve Olson from H2 Olson Engineering for the design for the permanent pipe into the finished water Hingham Street treatment plant. Um, and actually, we met with him again yesterday with the Boston, uh, Richard Friend from the Boston DEP over at the site, our uh, reservoir site in Zero Pond Street. Uh, the Zero Pond Street Canico Engineering are trying to zinc, uh, shrink the zone A, which is our protection, and a lot of their lands in the zone A. Um, so they petitioned the DEP that the Ben Man's Brook and the other tributaries do not um, contribute to our reservoir water, which yesterday during the walkthrough with Boston DEP, um, it was proven that it did. Uh, his opinion was uh, everything in the zone A should stay in the zone A. It's not official. He's got to go back and write up a report, but it looked like pretty good to be in our favor. Good. Um, the nice. reason they're trying to shrink the zone A is they have to be 200 feet away from the zone A to do any, um, you know, drainage um, reconstruction and parking lot building. So the less zone A they have, the more building and everything they can do in there. So, so they can't build in that area, correct? Not in the yeah. zone A. Um, Excuse no. me, Joe. We actually just, as you're speaking, got an email from Richard Friend confirming that zone A is as mapped. It will remain that way. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Crystal. Yep. Thank you. So zone A is mapped and stays zone A. So they didn't succeed in that after efforts to get that to shrink. So uh, they'll, have to, they'll have to do their thing. Yeah, I don't know where they're going to go from there. But yeah. You know. I think the original plans, they, they still were within that section, zone A, but I think they want to expand out. Um, that's about it for treatment. The distribution crews, two, so two new curb stops. Uh, they're working on exercising all the new gate valves and all the new water mains we put in. Hopefully, we do that once a year. So, you know, they stay exercised now. Anything we did new. All the older stuff, you know, it's never been exercised since 1920, so you get on it with breaks or whatever. If you keep a, a program up with all your newer installations, you know, the benefit of down the line. Uh, yeah, I still had a big eight inch main break uh, in front of the highway department on Central Street in Abington, uh, and we repaired a couple service leaks. Again, I just want to reiterate. The water levels of both reservoirs are still extremely low. Uh, Going to get some good beneficial rain tomorrow, but not from how from where we were last year. What do I got from the superintendent? I'll make a motion to accept the superintendent's report and also thank Crystal and Tommy Royal and Bill the point for the work they're doing. I also want to just comment on it, Pat. I don't know how well we are, like the public, you hear a little bit from your neighbors and, and different people. And uh, on that note, thanking the treatment side of this operation, which I don't think a lot of people realize even exists. Um, the amount of times the water, how, how often is the water tested, Joe, for? We, we test the water daily, but uh, each week uh, we do um, 19 call form samples around the whole system. Um, you know, we, Crystal, maybe, maybe you can take that question. I, I can take it. Um, it depends on the type of treatment. I think it would help some of the residents to understand that, you know, we don't just wait for a problem to happen and then report it that we're monitoring this stuff daily and constantly. And it's and sure. the yep. one of the light restrictions we're on there, you know. Um, it, it actually depends on the type of treatment plant you have and, and, um, and whatnot, but, um, as far as like how often you have to treat the water, um, well, not treat the water, how often you have to test the water. But in our case, um, it's continuously being monitored um, for chlorine and turbidity um, every minute. Uh, and then our operators are testing it 
every two hours, every four hours. Um, so it's continuously being monitored throughout their shift. And like Joe said, we go out and we do bacteria samples. Um, and then we also have a schedule that the DEP sends out to us that we have to do quarterly samples, monthly samples, um, you know, yearly samples. It all, it all depends on the schedule that they send us, but we are constantly sampling it all the time. Um, but the operators are usually on, they're usually testing hourly, to be honest with you, and making adjustments um, to the water. So, uh, you know, to improve the, the quality. Right. All right. Um, so, you know, we thank you for that. Uh, mm -hmm. know, when these PFAS things come up and things like that, I mean, those are the reasons is because of the extensive testing. And it's good that we catch that stuff, you know, the stuff yep. that's out of the um, department's control, but that's part of the department's responsibilities is to ensure that bad waters, you know, at all costs are going through the system. So sometimes I think it just helps that the, the um, some of the residents, you know, just make it that. That. Yeah. I've just done willy nilly here. Yeah. Uh, things Address, are, okay. Things are seriously I'm having hard. a hard time getting your, your card. And, uh, and uh, the treatment side for everybody's work, but so to the treatment side of these type of cases. So. Yeah, for sure. I reiterate what um, Bob said. And I'll second Bob's motion to um, accept the superintendent's report. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public forum. Anyone from the public wish to say anything about anything? You got one? So is there one? I can't hear Mary Carson. She's talking, but I can't hear her. Anyway, hello. I have a question. Uh, sorry, my oh. microphone was off. Could I have a copy okay. of the email from DEP about the zone A in the 200 foot buffer? Sure, I, sure. I haven't even had time to see it yet because I'm in this meeting. I was just told we, we had it, but I will send it. Um, if you want to send me your email, I can, I can shoot it to you. Or... Okay, what is your address? My email? Yes. Jay LaPointe, L A P O I N T E, at abrockwater, A B R O C K W A T E R dot com. At brockwater.com. Yeah. And it's J L A P O I N T E. Yep. Um, at Brockwater, all one word. Yes. Yep. Okay. Because I actually deal with DEP in Boston too, so it might be someone I know. Richard Friend. Richard Friend. Uh huh. Okay. Um, Dwayne Lavangi. Yeah. Thank you, John. What was the gentleman that wanted to say something? Yes, I have a question in regard to this PFAS and yeah. and filtering that it is ultimately. Can equipment be purchased that will filter that out? Correct. Yeah. Right. Right now, um, over at our wells at Myers Ave and Abington, we developed a well number four, which was a new well. During that pumping, back in October, uh, well, actually, it was probably earlier than October. It was like July of last year. Uh, our PFOS came back in at thirty parts per trillion. The state regulation at that time was 70. We were still up, up below it, but we knew by the time we got this well up and running, they'd have the new standard of 20. We, so we took one of our filters that was a grain sand filter and turned it into a granulated activated carbon filter for a pilot study through DEP. That has been running since October, so close to eight months and our PFOS going out of that plant at the 100% port is still zero. So our long-term goal is to almost do the same system at the Hingham Street Reservoir. We have two problems, well, not problems, but two hurdles to, to get over. Right now, we're trying to find fil filter vessels so we can set up two temporary ones to see if that's gonna, we're 100% confident it's gonna do the job. We want to get it up and running so we can get our PFOS below the 20 parts 
for a trillion, which it probably will. Uh, another thing with our other two plants, Pembroke and Myazab, being well below the PFOS levels. Once the water from Hanger Street gets out into the system, we're assuming it's blending. That's one way you can get rid of the PFOS. If you have two sources, say you have two different wells, one well has it, one doesn't. If you blend that water and get it into the system and it's under the 20, DEP will accept that as blending and you're below the 20 when it leaves your plant. When the water leaves our Hanger Street plant right now, it was above the 20. We're assuming once it gets out in the system, it's blending. We have no scientific proof of that, but um, we're not regulated to take samples out in the system to prove that. So to get back to the uh, hurdles at Hingham Street, once we can prove that this method will work eventually to make that plant run at 100% capacity, we'd have to purchase four of these, four of these filter vessels and then house them, at the, put an addition on the plant to house them. So right now we're probably talking three to five million dollars for this project to, to get us where we want to be. That's our second hurdle. Our first, our first priority is to get the PFOS below 20 and to get the water out the way we need it. So the three to five million, if that becomes available, how much of a time frame do you think it, it would take right. to, to complete it? Right now, if we wanted to order filter vessels, it's 22 to, I think they said 22 to 40 weeks out. It, we're not the only water department that has this problem. Right. Every, you know, this is going to be every statewide. It's definitely going to be statewide. We, we jumped on this early. So any water system from 10,000 people to 50,000 people are not obligated to test until April 1st. We started our testing in January just to get ahead of the game. So some of the, the other towns and, and treatment plants, they won't even know if they're exceeding this until April, May, June, probably July. Uh, and, then, and then the well, the well ones, the ones that are even smaller than us, they start testing in, in October. So it's even kind of a more spread out, you know, type of testing um, schedule. Yeah. So we actually, like I said, we, we try to be aggressive. We try to get out there early. Um, we did receive $199,000 grant from DEP to design the final finish for Maya's F treatment plant once we're out of the pilot study, um, which we just got. And, you know, like we were talking yesterday um, with our engineers, DEP is going to have to come up with some money. Uh, the state's going to have to come up with some money. I know President Biden has $10, $10 billion in his um, infrastructure recovery plan just to cover PFOS itself. Um, we, not, not only us, every other town in the, in the state, I mean, we're all going to need help on this, whether they, you know, zero interest loans or whatever. But I mean, it, it's got to be cured and it, it's got to be done. Um, you know, the DEP, this is all new to them. We're looking for guidance through them. Uh, but like I said, we get out early, so we're coming to like the guinea pigs to the, the DEP also. You know, and, and it, it's kind of, you know, getting those people, getting the public education letters out. We had prepared, they send you a template, we fill in our information, we put in our information, we send it back to DEP for approval. We sent it back as soon as we got it done, and then they decided they were changing their template. So then they had to redo their template. We had to redo ours. So, you know, we, we did use up our full 30 days to get the education out there, but um, it was, you know, out of our hands. We, we, Crystal, myself, I mean, we went out of our way to, you know, notify the public as soon as we can. and. You know, our first priority is to, you know, get us below the state mandated 20 parts per trillion. Like I said, 70 parts per trillion is the federal government standard, which we're well below. Um, you know, and when we were testing, we were obligated to test every three years. We were all, always undetectable because it was below the state standard. 
and probably below 20. Um, now that they lower the standard, they're really, um, I'm not going to say that, you know, they want it done now, but with all the logistics, you can only move as fast as you can move. Um, and even, you know, we're going to the, trying to get the filters for Henry Street. We still have to do a design, present it to them to change the treatment to get it approved before we can even, you know, instigate it. So, like I said, you know, we're moving forward, in, you know, not a snail's pace as fast as we can go. And, you know, that's about where we're at. You know, it's really nothing new. PFOS has always been here. It's nothing that the water department, you know, did to the water. It's nothing we could prevent from entering the water system. Um, once it's in the aquifer, it's anybody that's on that aquifer is, is getting that PFOS. So, um, that's about where we're at. Thank you. Rick. Anyone else? Yeah, Rick Collins. Just to fully understand everything, the uh, filter, I'm sorry, wait, just make sure what you called it, the filter vessels, yeah. are, is that what exists at the new Meyer Ab facility, that fourth? Uh, we, we actually turned one of our filters that was a sand filter into a carbon activated filter. Which is basically the same thing, yes. Okay, so that's, I guess that was my understanding. My question was to basically what you're doing at Myers Ave, which is working so well, is what you want to do at Hingham Street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, but that might not happen for you know a minimum forty weeks until you get these things in place, get well, the permit, get design. Yesterday, and, well, supposedly. I think they said 22 to 26 weeks, Joe, yeah. to, you know, it, it's kind of like they, they make them when you order them. So, um, that's the temporary for one. one company, you know, it could be something different if we find, you know, a better option. We are looking right now for used ones, um, like Pease Air Force Base and, and, and other towns that have had this major problem. They, they had tanks that they used and built treatment plants those tanks were brought back and refurbished. Some of them have already been sold. Um, we're doing our due diligence um, between us and, the, and our engineers, making all sorts of phone calls, hunting them down. If we can get two for temporary, that's our goal right now. Get the two temporary ones set up at Hingham Street, get our approval from DEP. We could probably do that for under 200. Well, not, we could probably do the work for under 250, but purchasing the filter vessels would be something different. They average anywhere between um, 150 to 200 thousand dollars a piece just to purchase the vessel. Um, that's our short-term goal: get the two up and running. Eventually, if you know, we're, we're very confident that's going to work. Uh, like I said, we'll have to purchase four to six more vessels to do the permanent at Hingham Street, and the two temporary that we're going to purchase now for Hingham Street will be the permanent solution for my Zap. It's, it's kind of a very uh, aggressive, uh, aggressive, the most safe, aggressive, and cost effective treatment process that we're looking at right now. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're trying to expedite it as fast as we can. If, if I remember the public education letter, I think the test results said it was from mid January and mid February. Yep. yep. Was there tests taken mid March? We the test in March. Done in the, at the end of March. Okay, yeah. has that has that come back? In the March, um, we're actually waiting for DEP to certify those results now to see if uh, you know, that the PAC solution worked or lowered it at all. Um, we're waiting to, to have everything verified by DEP. Okay. Um, These samples typically take anywhere from ten days to two weeks to get returned, and then DEP actually has, uh, sends them up as a UMass Amherst crystal. To, yeah. UMass Amherst does some, to make sure they qualify. Uh, we actually had a sample, was it in December, that came back at 18 under the 20, but DEP ruled it didn't qualify because something happened at the lab. Okay. So they gave us false hope and then pulled the rug right out from under us. The samples have 
be validated by DEP first before they um, before they give them back. Okay. So in, in the science, the science on this, where it's so low from 70 down to 20 parts per trillion, is, is not a perfect science now. Um, according to our engineers, the, the labs, that, there's only a certain amount of labs that'll do this testing. And a number of the labs that have problems uh, with, with people, there's, supposedly there's a 30% variation. It could be 30% lower, it could be 30% higher. So, some people have been taking a, a PFOS sample one month and coming back at 10 parts per trillion. They take it at the exact same spot the next month and it's 25. So it's not an exact science. We have to go with the numbers they, the DEP gives us. So, and, and like I said earlier, a lot of the, our opinion is a lot of the water that is going out there now where it's just barely over the 20 parts per bill, uh, trillion. Once it's blending with the other one, it, it's below the, the limit. But like I said, we can't prove that scientifically, but that's our opinion. So it, it, it seems like this is going to be a situation that we're going to be dealing with for at minimum a couple of months here. Uh, I, um, I, would, I, would, I would say yes. So for the average person, uh, is it safe for them to take a shower, to do the dishes with this water, to yeah. wash their clothes? Yep, absolutely. It, right now, you know, like it said in the public education letter, um, the tumors in the sensitive subgroup um, should be the most concerned. The other, the other, anybody else, it's over a seven, uh, seven year period of, of consuming the water. Um, that these effects would kick in. Okay. So we sent out the public education letters to basically let every customer make their own educated decision on whether, you know, they think they're at risk or, you know, or not. And is anything being done to help provide water to those who won't be able to consume? Um, no. Okay. The only thing, you know, we gave suggestions to buy, you can buy source uh, filters for, you know, one of your sinks or whatever, if, if you were concerned, but we haven't actually been uh, done violation yet. So uh, we haven't even had that discussion. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rick. Anyone else on discussion? Hi, I have a question. Um, my name's Nicole Corbett. I live on Van Buren Drive. Um, quick things. Um, so I do a lot of work um, with water down in Mashpee. Um, PFAS has been on their agenda for a while because of their proximity to the joint, uh, the joint base down there. Um, up here, one, is there any suspicion that, I know that it's gonna be hard to ID exactly where these are coming from because you don't know what's in that mixture of the six. Um, any suspicion that the base in the proxim us in proximity to the old Naval base that might've had leaching of the firefighting foam into the water supply, which may have been you know, contributing to some of this? Yes, we've had that discussion with um, DEP. Uh, right now, DEP, uh, I think they're trying to get their hands around this being, you know, the problems they're going to have lower into 20. Eventually, right. they're going to have to trace back the sources. Right now, that I don't think they're concentrating on that. We have brought that up about the air base. We were told that the water would, would not be flowing this way, which I grew up in Abington. I used to walk the streams to the air base, so I, I kind of doubt what, what I'm being told about that. Right. You have to look at where the where the watershed is and where that divide is. Right, yeah. Uh, we are eventually going down that road to trace back. I mean, it'd be great if we could prove that the air base, did, you know, put the PFOS in the water and the, the United States government could give us some cash. But, uh, <laughs> also, you know, we have a couple other things over by that reservoir. There used to be a Boston whale where the Home Depot is. That yeah. Could have been something like that. Um, you know, other things. You know, could have anything from a dump to, you know, like I said, who knows, you know. Yeah, dirty fill, if you had yeah. that. 
I mean, when we had an issue at the Myers Ave plant, we kind of traced back different streams through the town of Abington and we made it all the way to Weymouth and still had it in the stream. So, right. I mean, you, you know, you um, probably know better from Mashby how you keep chasing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a mess down there. There's PFAS all in every single river. You're pulling, they're yeah. pulling out. Yeah. All, all different. Um, one of our treatment operators used to work at, I think, in Mashby, correct, Crystal? No, Hyannis. Hyannis, say. Eh? Yeah. yeah, you can only imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, they have no. Also, the sand—it's just sand down there, so the water's just going right through. There's no no retention. Right. Yep. Um, my next question is: Couple towns did jump the gun. So Wayland's one of the towns that's handing out bottled water to high risk customers, and I think Rick just touched on that. Um, any recommend? I know that the town said that they're really not going to do this, but any recommendations? Like, if you're pregnant, nursing, and then. Older people, like I have a 94 year old in this house, that's probably not somebody who should probably have be drinking the water, even though PFAS has probably been in here for, you know, the last 40, 50 years. There is a, um, in the mailer on the second page at the top, um, there's a, um, a website that you can go to right on DEP that uh, gives you uh, the results of a, a number of bottled water companies that actually, um, they, uh, they give you their results of the PFAS testing. Cause as you know, I'm sure um, bottled water companies don't have to test for this. So right. there well could be PFAS in, in your bottled water. Um, yep. So there have been a good amount of companies that have been um, pretty transparent with their testing and DEP has taken those tests and posted them on the website. So if you feel as though you wanna go to bottled water yourself or like you said, um, your family member, I would definitely uh, consult that website for sure. Mm -hmm. um, definitely. And also, uh, some of those bottled water companies, you might want to ask them for their results because they, they some of those tests were from mm -hmm. 2018 when the limit was 70 parts per trillion. They might be mm -hmm. under the 20. Um, right. You know, that, that was one issue that we didn't know about that our engineers brought to our attention yesterday. Um, there's also, like I said, uh, single source filters that you can put right underneath your sink for one sink. Um, we just, you know, we can't really be um, recommending one of those. Um, that, that's, there's some on the, uh, on the back of the uh, newsletter we sent out. We really can't endorse any products or, or recommend them at this point. Right. A lot of those two are following federal guidelines, right? Because they're only guaranteeing down to the 70, but they won't guarantee the 20. Correct. Correct. Right. You do have to do yeah. your due diligence and you have to, when you research, that's actually something our engineers had mentioned. Like if, if you, you know, a customer does want to do a, a filter, great. You know, you can make sure that it meets the NSF standard P473 um, mm -hmm. to remove the PFAS, but not all fil filter companies actually will tell you that like you said, it, it doesn't bring it down to the mass standard. It'll only bring it down to the 70 with the feds. So you do have to do your due diligence and kind of look into that. Um, you know, the good thing about it is with here, you don't have to remove all that much because we're just a smidge over the limit. So um, I'm just, you know, I'm thinking you might not have to uh, look too, too far for a filter that will remove um, what you need it to remove to get you below the 20. And then also, if you do decide to do a filter, um, you know, it's important to know that you have to maintain that filter because they can get gunked up over time. And then, you know, you, you definitely need to remove them and, and replace them. Um, so you're also creating that waste yourself too. So um, it's just, just things to know, a um, couple little tips, but you know, bottle water, definitely check it out. Make sure it's the, you know, it's been tested for PFAS and then also the filter, if you choose to do that, and um, it needs to meet NSF standard P473, and then just maintain the filter that you choose to put in, if, if that's the route you want to go. Right. And Nicole, like I said earlier, um, up in Van Buren area, most of that water is coming either from Myers Ave or our Pembroke treatment plant. Mm -hmm. So um, you're probably very rarely getting any water from Pingham Street plant. Right. Okay. Like I said it, it probably would be blending also, anyways, but um, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Okay. Excellent. I just wanted to check that out. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you.
Yeah, the PFAS um, results coming from Sandy Bottom are super low. I mean, you're talking uh, uh, off the top of my head, I don't have the results in front of me, but anywhere from like two and change to five and change. So very, very low results right. coming from the Sandy Bottom uh, treatment plant. You that remember. makes sense too, just kind of based on the location of that pond. So like there's not a lot that was built around that that would have contributed to PFAS that I can even think of. They but. actually expected that treatment plant to have higher levels because there's the, plant, uh, the pond and they, you know, expected with, uh, you know, the, you know, people using the laundry detergent and whatnot, oh, okay. and, you know, but it ended up uh, not being the case, which, which was great. We were, we were pretty uh, pleased with that information. That's good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? For comments? Me, I want to know if there was any health study. Has there been any health studies done on the PFAS and PFOs? Because I've been doing it for 10 years with the Navy base. The government of the state of Massachusetts health studies. Because this has just been lowered, right? It's just been lowered. It's I've just never heard of any, but that doesn't mean anything. I, I, Tara, are you on here, our engineer? Yes, yes, I am, Crystal. Hi. Do you know? Do you know of any? Uh, across the entire country, there's been numerous different uh, studies on PFOS, PFOA. So uh, you can Google and take a look. As far as the actual towns of Abington and Rockland, uh, as far <laughs> as I know, they haven't done anything specific. But yeah, there, right there's now. been studies, but I've never heard of any health studies being done. And I know about the PFAS in terms of international and everything else because of the Navy base, because yes, there's PFAS on the Navy base and they've been doing those studies and they have land use controls on those areas. Also, the watershed is the South Coastal watershed, which the groundwater is not moving towards the Hingham Street Reservoir that I know of, but French's stream has been a um, 303 impaired stream that DEP has allowed to be a 303 impaired stream. But I know of no health studies being done uh, to state what are the, you know, effects of PFAS in your bloodstream. I do know that at Pease Air Force Base, they tested children's bloodstream and found them off the charts because it was in the water really bad up there. It was, and your skin yeah. absorbs more PFAS than you can drink. So unless you have a filter on your shower, you're getting PFAS through your skin. You, get, you, you, you could get PFOS through your skin sitting on your couch or laying on your floor that has scars. Right, right, because it, it's everything that's water repellent yep. has PFAS it, it, in it. And you don't think they have studies, right? If, if, you're, if you're cooking a fried egg in an old Teflon pan, you're eating more PFOS yep. than you've been drinking in 70 years. So. We don't know of any health studies. No, we, we haven't done I mean, that, we that's not, we're, not, we're not health experts. We're, you know, we're just trying to follow the DEP guidelines get where we're supposed to be. Right, but my point is, is, it, is DEP should be coming out with any kind of health studies. Let us know that health studies have been done. Yeah. PFAS, because it, Mass DEP has known about the PFAS for quite a few years, yeah. a couple of decades. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that Karen, do you want to say something? You're awful quiet. You're muted. Can you unmute, Karen? Are you there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I came in on the, I had a doctor's appointment. I came in late, so I don't know what you covered. And I don't want you to, to repeat anything. Um, but there is an organization on the Cape called POCA, which is, um, it's an organization that is saving the aquifers. And basically what they're trying to do is keep a lot of the pollutants out of the ground, because obviously this is an after effect of everything that's been already put in there and is infiltrated through our water system. And the other thing too is I had a whole house water system put in um, last June and it has really changed my water. I'm going to call the company or I was gonna ask you, do you have a place we, you can test to see if the P473 has been removed out of my water? Because I'd love to share this. I'm very, very happy with it. We, we, 
we can't take, you can have your water tested. We can't do that. Um, anything we test, um, it has to be where we leave our plant. We can't even do system tests for the, for the PFOS uh, DEP regulation. You, okay, can, so you, you can get those tested. Just to give you a heads up, it's about $500 to test that we're paying. Yeah, I know. I explored that last year. That's why I just went with the system. And under my sink, I have the reverse osmosis. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no more brown water, no more, um, you know, bad smell. The skin is better. The hair is better. The cooking is better. Um, I also found out when you do a reverse osmosis, it takes three gallons for every one. So if anybody gets that, I would say just get that for your drinking water under the sink. Yeah. But um, I will call the company that I used and find out what tests they've done as far as eliminating the PFOS and share it with anybody that's interested because we're very, very happy with it. And it wasn't, you know, it was the first stimulus check. <laughs> I put Karen, it all you have to do, just make sure, just ask them if it meets the standard, uh, the NSF standard P473. And then if you need, um, if you're ever interested in getting your water tested for PFAS yourself, um, I'm sure you can go on the government website. They have uh, state approved labs that will will do the testing. You know, like like Joe said, it is kind of costly, but that's completely up to you. But um, you know, uh, the the state has labs. I'm sure that are on there that that do the testing, and and you can look that up. You used to be able to take all this to the extension service in the old days, but apparently yeah. they don't do that anymore. Now, with it being where this is, if if it's proven that this is something that is reflective of the Air Force Base. Would there be any compensation as far as if you know people are going to be spending money on water or they have to put a filter in their house because of an illness? I mean, is there going to be any compensation to get any money back? Almost like grants? I would say if you can find the source and the source is still a viable company, like the United States government, per se, or whatever, absolutely there could be a class action lawsuit or whatever. Oh, I'll be dead by then. But yeah, yeah. But yes, I, I came in late. I'm sorry. All I can tell you is the Navy sent out a flyer and I put it out on Facebook for them as well, um, asking people if they had any kind of a well that they would give them bottled water and so on and so forth because they wanted to test it. Hmm. Um, that's the extent of that. But in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, he's oh, yeah. had a big problem with it. Yep. Yeah, our engineers, the engineers we're working with right now actually worked up there. Um, that they hopefully have some connections in getting us some filters. Our engineers are very experienced with this, which is why we you know, chose to go with them. And um, we have all the confidence with them in, in, in to getting this job done. Uh, we don't take it lightly at all. We, we plan on getting rid of it as fast as possible and being as aggressive as possible. And, um, you know, DEP has been very pleased with how we've um, reacted to it. And, um, you know, that, that, that makes us feel good, but we want to, you know, we want to do the job and, and get it done. Um, Cause it, it's, it's something that we care about, you know, as well. Yes, Pembroke, Pembroke um, great Sandy bottom pond is okay. It is. Yeah, that's what that's what I kind of thought, but you might maybe in Hingham Street you might be able to find a source at some point. I would hope so. Yeah, you the firefighter see. training area on the base is the source. Yeah. You find the damage is done. You can find the source and help us recover the, the money. Right. We have to cure the problem. Uh, the damage is done. That's guess. fine. Yeah. I think North Conway right. had it mandated the whole time anyway, though. I don't care. Matt and I are both going to be in the public forum. Could I just say, actually, I just wanted to kind of say one more thing. Um, I just wanted to thank the residents that actually took the time to give a call. Um, and just to ask questions and go over this with me at the office and just ask their questions and get clarification on the mailer when they didn't understand something or they just wanted more, even if they did understand something, they wanted more information. Um, because I know there's a lot of, you know, technic technical words in this and, you know, um, there's also a lot of misinformation out there and 
you know, I, I actually really appreciate when people call in because it gives me a, a chance to explain all of this and, and get at the real information out there and make sure that everybody, um, you know, fully understands what what's really going on and, and how, how hard we are working on this and, and, um, and how much we really do care about this situation and, and the dedication that we have, you know, and, you know, we plan on really do, uh, you know, really working hard to get this, get this done as soon as possible. So um, just thank you for giving a call in. Really appreciate it. Okay. And if you do know anybody that, you know, there's, there's a lot of false information, especially on Facebook and both times. Yes. You know, the water's contaminated, you know, the water's contaminated, the water's got lead in it. It's a lot of misinformation that just snowballs. If, if they call the office and, you know, we might not get someone right away, we will get back to you. Naturally, we've been inundated with the phone calls, like I said earlier, Crystal and Tommy. Um, but you do get the right information from 90% of the people. Once they have the right information, they're a little bit more, you know, calm and collected and, and you move from there. Um, like I said, it's not from the water department call, nothing we could have prevented, but we have to get it fixed. So we're moving full steam ahead. Unfortunately, a lot of water departments are gonna be seeing this and a lot of towns in this and it's it's you know it's just something that we're all going to be working on together and you know even I don't I don't live in these towns but I'm sure I'm going to be seeing it from my town and you know our employees live in these towns too so you know we're all in this together we all do care and and we plan on you know full steam ahead we're gonna we're gonna do it as fast as we possibly can it's across the country it's every town it is. it's been it around is. for 50 years and it's not any water department's fault at all. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. All right, uh, Commissioner's Forum. I have nothing. I have nothing. Make a motion that we adjourn. Okay, motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'm going to open the meeting for the Rockland Board of Water Commissioners. Four or five. I've done the agenda to uh, review the minutes. Make a motion to accept. All those in favor? Hello. Financial report. A couple of minutes to get my paper to the Let's go, Joe. So, financial report for the town of Rockland <laughs> through March 54.5% through the budget, uh, three months to go. So, we're looking pretty good there. Uh, you know, we might be spending a little bit more, with them, like I said earlier, with the mailings and everything that went out. Uh, you got to do it. You know, everything's going to be done. Uh, some unaccounted for things naturally come up that we didn't expect with the people. Also. But still got some room there, 64.5% room. Hang on. Make the motion to accept. Uh, Make a motion to accept. Second motion. All those in favor? Aye. Now we have public forum for anybody out there. This is a Rockland meeting. I uh, hear nobody, so we'll go on to commission this forum. I have nothing other than to thank the water board for the job they're doing, Joe, you and your staff. Yeah. Everybody, treatment plan operators, road crews. Everybody, Crystal, Tommy, you guys are doing an awesome job. We appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Good people around it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. We're adjourning at 443. Aye. Okay, now I'm going to open the Avenue Board of Water Commission meeting at 443. Review minutes. Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. 
I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Financial report. Uh, Abington financial report to the much of, month of March. Uh, 69.8% to the budget. Um, so roughly 70% with a few months to go. Um, Abington always looks a little higher because they take up debt and interest right out in July. So that puts a big debt in it, and then we'll move on to the uh, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Public forum, forum for Abington. All right. No public left. No public left. So, all right. So, commission's forum for Abington. Sure. One thing on the commission's forum, I should have probably brought it up under the joint. That probably went next to me. Is the one thing I noticed is that now that we're doing Zoom, when you look at all the locations people can call in from, you just have them state the name and address. Yeah, Chip said that. I'm sorry, I missed it, but yeah. And it's tough too because Joanne's trying to take the minutes to the meeting and she's got to try to figure out on Zoom who's talking. So yeah, we do have a, uh, you know, it doesn't have their name and address, but usually it has their name. Yeah, just so we are. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought somebody's calling in from Chicago. So next time we just have to have state name and address. Yeah. You know, you know they, they call from Rock and I have this Yeah. That's all. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. All right, I'll second. I'll I'll think think we'll be able to own the street by the plan will come. Come on in, come on here. Come on in. Come on in. Okay. Well that that's what I'm thinking if you might start now if there's all the success in the kids so. yet. You would join Jeff. We're Jeff. Yep. She's going. Good night. Uh, no, he's been gone for a minute.